Hello, my name is Morag Gamble and welcome to tonight's Masterclass. Tonight's Masterclass is all about public speaking because I know that it's actually one of the top fears of many people and, and often we, we overlook many opportunities that are presented to us or shy away from things simply because we just are too afraid to get up and speak in front of other people. So I wanted to share with you some of my top tips for public speaking because somehow I've ended up in this space for the last 25 years actually being a public speaker. And I actually I actually remember being at university and being absolutely terrified of standing up in front of my peers. I would actually forego that part of my assessment simply so I didn't have to stand up and talk in front of anyone else. So what I discovered over the last, you know, two and a half decades is how actually getting up and speaking and sharing is such a powerful thing. It's a, such a fabulous way to connect and it's a great way to open doors to possibilities that you didn't even imagine existed simply because you're putting yourself there in a really honest and open way and sharing as much as you can and people notice that. And then new opportunities start to come, uh, you know, forward for you. So I really want to encourage you to really dive into this. Some of you I know are probably public speakers and you do this a lot and just looking for maybe there's a couple of extra tips. I hope you'll get something out of it. For those of you who public speaking is your number one fear, I also hope this will give you some confidence and some ideas to move forward um, and to use this opportunity to really find ways forward. I, you know, one of the things that I've found absolutely fantastic about public speaking and getting up and doing talks is it's given me an opportunity to really meet a whole lot of new people, to get involved in local community projects, to support community projects and to do really positive work. Um, that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. It's also given me, I think, a ticket to be able to travel to many, many different places and communities and actually um, entry into many different venues and conferences and festivals um, because I do an exchange quite often with, with speaking. So not only it, um, does it provide me with, a, with an income, um, and through permaculture speaking, but it also gives me an opportunity to do a lot of community exchange. So both in the in the community economy, the gift economy, and but also the monetary economy. So both of those things together really help to support um, a sustainable way of life and a, a life that's based on sharing the things that I think really matter, which is you know actually speaking up about what's happening in the earth and in the communities uh, and and all the issues that surround us because you can weave together a whole lot of different ideas through permaculture and through this idea of living more simply you can talk about pretty much every single issue that's out there that's of concern to you bringing it home in a really nice localized way so I just wanted to let you know that all of the master classes that I put forward which uh, every month are sponsored by the Permaculture Education Institute and this is the Institute that I started up um, actually just last year <clears throat> in in a response to help to um, mentor and train permaculture teachers. So I have an online permaculture teacher program which has both the permaculture design course and the permaculture teacher course. And what I'm trying to do with this is to download as much as I can of sort of 25 years of my permaculture experience and my teaching experience into a really cohesive package that people can take and and then also create their own really viable livelihood doing this that because what I what I said last masterclass as well, I absolutely totally believe that permaculture can be a real job and particularly permaculture education and a key part of being a good permaculture educator or better than good, an excellent permaculture educator is having the capacity to speak in public and to speak out in front of people. 
So permaculture speaking, like I said before, has has given me the opportunity to go to places that I'd, I'd never imagined 25 years ago. I've been able to work in um, 22 different countries on five continents, working with with children, with refugees, with uh, women's groups, with farmers groups, um, taught in in universities and um, spoken on on radio and television and on film. And this is someone who used to who used to run away from public speaking because because I didn't like it very much. And so really what I'm wanting to share with you is some of the key key things that I think have have really helped me to to understand how how much it is that public speaking can be of benefit and public speaking can be something that can really nourish your life and actually contribute significantly to your way of life and at the same time really nourish you personally i i absolutely love speaking now and not in an not in an egotistical way but in a way that i speak for the trees you know it's this lo- the thing from the lorax that I feel that through speaking, I can personally make a contribution. And my contribution that I'd like to make is to actually help encourage people to live a more sustainable life, a more simple life, one where their work and their life is connected and that, that it's a, a good life, a place where you can you know, raise, your, raise your family in a healthy, happy, clean place and that you can help to address issues of social injustice. Um, and in ecological injustice and so public speaking gives you the chance to share the ideas and to maybe invite other people to join in with you on that too so the my first tip that I wanted to share with you is about the key thing to keep in mind when you are actually presenting and you're getting you're standing up is to share your absolute love and enthusiasm for your topic and that you dive into it and to encourage a curiosity and to share your own curiosity about that topic so it's really about speaking from your heart it's not about trying to speak from a a head to a head in the audience and and just downloading the information that you have and you've you're really trying to sort of inform people really what I found is the most effective way when you're speaking is to try and speak from the heart to the heart rather than the head to the head because in if you're able to touch someone else's heart with your heart there's an opening that happens in terms of how people perceive what you're saying how they're willing to maybe explore it within themselves and also to open up the possibilities for them to maybe explore it even further once your talk is finished so what also this means is that it's kind of easy to do because if you're passionate about something and you're it's something that you you live your days exploring it's what you spend your energy your hobby your time doing you just know this stuff you you know it you feel it you are it you you, you're you know it's your being and if you stand up present in that then you're able to share so much more effectively than if you're trying to sort of talk about something else that you don't particularly feel connected with so what I always encourage people to do if you if you are just starting out doing public speaking is to pick the topics that you you know imagine you're just talking with a friend you've gone over for a cup of tea and you start having a conversation about something and you just easily speak about this topic it's something that just comes naturally and you have a lot of information a lot of background a lot of experience stories you've seen what other people have done in other places and you know you know what the different experiences are you can share that from that perspective you have so much more richness of a story that you can tell and really that's a lot about what it is it's about sharing a story and connecting in that way So the second point I wanted to talk about was actually planning well. So there's one thing having passion and enthusiasm and a love for your topic and speaking for your heart and all of that. But you need to actually really think 
carefully about well, who are your audience? Where is it that you're speaking? Um, do you know what the venue is like? Do you know what your audience is coming to, to hear? Really think clearly and maybe mind map this out about okay so these are the sorts of people that will be coming this is the general theme of the the event perhaps um, see if you can map that out and think about a through line so what is the connecting thread along your whole talk that will sort of hold it and bind it together so I really encourage you to think about that to check out your venue to see what else is happening in that space um, to know a little bit more about your context because if you can do that then once you start to speak it's going to be so much more of a better fit and that that is such an important thing to to think about now what I wanted to also say there too is that it's a really great idea to to rehearse your talk if you're just beginning to to maybe do it a few times time yourself because one of the worst things is to be doing your presentation <clears throat> and you've got to the point where you've uh, your time has run out and you're only halfway through your slides and you you know all that what I mean I think I would like to encourage you to think about all the all the talks that you've been to that you thought oh gosh that they could have done that better or they could have done that better what are those things so that you know they've either rushed their slides their slides have been too busy um, they ran out of time uh, what else did they do what were the things that you thought weren't so great and then start to to learn from those so I do encourage you to rehearse to, to plan what you want to say to find your through line your connected thread and then to re rehearse what you want to say now there's sort of two different ways of going about this you could possibly script what you wanted to say so work out what you wanted to say from start to finish and practice that but I would only encourage you to do that if you're going to memorize it sort of put it into your sort of deep memory somewhere so when you get out there it's not something that you're reading or that if you start you're going to get stuck if that's going to be the case then I would much much more be likely to encourage you to have a general plan a structure of a talk that has sort of points along the way and that you talk to those different points and one of the things that you can do to help you with that is to have a series of really excellent um, either props or simple presentations I mean like the pictures that I'm showing you now there's one picture a couple of pieces of text but not masses of amounts of points that are too difficult to read and that you feel like you have to read through them all I mean the thing is that if it's written up on the screen and it's visible you probably don't need to say it so you can talk about something else so plan your talk well plan your props well or your presentations well and don't use them as a crutch don't speak through them use them as a sort of a uh, something that can strengthen what it is that you're trying to say practice your talk well and really think about what are your opening remarks and what are your closing remarks and these are kind of the bookends to your connective thread of the message that you're wanting to get through so if you have that planned well in your mind and you have a couple of points along the way you actually even if you just had those key points somewhere in front of you or that your slides worked you through that or um, like I said before you have some props so for example often when I'm doing a public talk um, that's got to do with permaculture I might have a series of plants in front of me and each of those plants is for me a memory trigger to mention about a particular thing so for example if I see comfrey that's a memory trigger to talk about um, compost and soil improvement when I see Brazilian spinach that's my memory trigger to talk about the opportunity to use perennial greens and so on so have triggers to remind you what are your key points and they may be slides or that may be <clears throat> a prop of some sort so really try and avoid to have notes or um, a series of slides that you work through because more often than not you're just going to end up stumbling over them one of the things that audiences love is when you give yourself so generously in terms of your that you are putting your heart and soul in it that you're sharing your personal stories you're sharing the information not just that you're 
you know, pointing to another course that you're running somewhere else or that you're pointing to a book that you've just written or something else. But actually the content that you're giving right then and there in that talk and every talk that you do has a a bountiful amount of information that is useful, that is practical, that is something that is of value that people who've, who've spent their time to come and spend with you at that talk you know, it's time, it's ta- it's effort, it may be some expense. They've come to spend with you at that talk that the best thing you can do is to give as generously as you can. I met this woman, Davida Davison, um, recently at the Sustainable Living Festival. We shared a stage together at one of the, the big events and I was absolutely blown away by the story that this this woman told and she was so heartfelt I mean she was actually crying at one point that was just such a heartfelt talk that she gave and in response it was phenomenal the whole audience got up and gave her and this enormous standing ovation and so the thing is that because she was so heartfelt in what she said and she gave of herself so generously and so much information that people felt they were going to be able to take away they're going to remember that. They're going to feel that feeling that they they experienced at that talk and have a much deeper memory of the message that she was sharing. And it's not necessarily about the person. It's about the content. Um, and so I think it's it's really important to sort of separate yourself from that in a way. It's not about you becoming, you know, the the hero standing up and speaking. And it's more about how you as a speaker are able to push forward a message and an idea and a a way of thinking and hopefully maybe disrupt the status quo you know in terms of helping to put a wedge I guess into some of the standard thinking that's happening in the world today so that you can open up possibilities for really positive change so give as much as you can in every talk give handouts give links to references and links to all different sorts of things but within the talk itself make sure that people have something that they can take home and be authentic be yourself this was another young woman who was at the sustainable living festival and I wanted to say about um, you know to be authentic as you can and this young woman just popped into mind when I was thinking that because she's 14 and she was sitting up there on the stage talking about how she was inspired by um, Greta, this this young Swedish girl who's um, opening up this whole global movement of um, students striking for climate change. And she was so inspired by her, and she just she started in her in her bedroom this the movement in Sydney, which has rippled out throughout Australia with the kids in Castlemaine. And she just sat up there and she spoke her truth she spoke her heart there was no ego involved there was nothing about her that was false in any way she was just being absolutely natural she had an her she was in her natural you know clothing she wasn't putting on anything particular that would make her feel uncomfortable she was speaking in her natural voice she was just speaking honestly and truthfully and being authentically herself and speaking her truth and that shows through so much if you try and put on something else or put on an act or be something that maybe you're not really it shows so clearly so the the more authentic that you can be and the more natural that you can be in your own space so you know quite often you know the the temptation particularly when you've got a big talk is to go and get you know like a nice new outfit but the I would suggest to you to find something that's just really simple and easy to wear that you feel comfortable in. Um, to be honest, I or you probably noticed in all of my talks, I typically just wearing a standard black top with some kind of colorful bottom. That's just what I feel comfortable in. It's not a uniform or anything. It's just what I feel comfortable in. And and my little secret is that quite often, because I live in a subtropical area, you you can get a bit sweaty when you're up on stage. And the, the probably the least noticeable sweat marks under your arm is when you wear a black top. So there you go. Now you know my secret. <laughs> anyway, so being authentic though is is a really important part because people will be, people will take 
what you say far more when you're speaking it honestly and truthfully and with heart. And if you can engage and connect with your audience right from the outset, uh, you've already started to get people, I was going to say on your side, but maybe that's the way to say it, that they're there, they're ready, they're ready to hear what it is that you've got to say. And Costa was our MC. This is Costa. For those of you who are not from Australia, this this man is um, the he heads up the ABC Gardening Australia show, and he's just about everywhere around Australia when it's got to do with with gardening or permaculture or sustainable living or compost, and and so I invited him to be the MC for our event. And before we even began, he had the whole audience ready and waiting and engaged. And he has this kind of twinkle about his eye. Like he, he connects with people. He's, his big smile, his, his sparkly eyes. And he just talks straight from person to person. And he's always there with eye contact. He gets down in amongst the crowd and he's talking to people before the talk starts, after the talk's finished. And it's really an important thing to not sort of put yourself separate when you're a speaker, but actually to be very much a part of uh, where you are. And I know that this is, I was asking my children before I um, was preparing, as I was preparing this session today, and I was asking them, so, so what do you think are really good talks, you know, that you've been to? What makes you stop and listen and, and pay attention? And my daughter, she's 12, and she said, well, mom, the most important thing is when, when the speaker involves others and really makes us feel part of it. You know, maybe they're even brought up on stage or maybe they're asking us questions or they're they're asking us to think of something, that we're part of it, that we're doing it together. So I thought that was a really amazing um, response and I think that is, is the key I think to actually really, well it's one of one of the many keys but for me if you're not connecting, you're really not, you're going to lose most people in, in the process and they'll walk away and say, well, that was an interesting talk, but you haven't really engaged them. Um, so in order to do that, though, I think it, I think taking that approach to can also help you to relax. So if you've had a bit of a chat with people before your session starts, and you've made a relationship with some people and you've already found out what it is that you're um, that they're interested in um, you've got someone that you can smile at in the audience um, and so you can get up onto your stage or in front of the group and you can breathe and relax and smile at the people who are already your friends because you've made that relationship and maybe even in your talk you can start to make a direct connection. You can use an example of something you just had a chat with that person about and then that draws that connection stronger and it makes the audience feel so much more connected to you. Um, in response to when I was asking my kids about um, what they thought, my son, was he, his response was to say, oh, look, it the speakers which really make me sit up and listen are the ones who absolutely love what they do and you can feel it you can feel the difference so um i was going to mention that at the start but i just think you know that again is a really important point so that was my number one point to really talk from that position of enthusiasm and love and i think it's a really good thing to ask people what they like about speaking and ask your family ask ask yourself ask your friends what are the things about speakers and talks public lectures um, presenters whatever who, whatever context you're wanting to work in what is it that they like so another thing that I think is really important within a within a public um, within public speaking is to really think about when you when you're giving the talk it's not just about delivery of information like these people your audience are why you're there you're not there to kind of say you know this and that's and you're wonderful you're there because these people are there you don't have a public talk unless you have an audience so what is it that this audience is wanting to hear what have they come to listen to what is it that you can share with them how can you engage them involve them and then send them away with something 
that they feel, aha, oh gosh, I never realized that before. That's a, you know, like an aha moment or a, or a revelation, an insight, something like it's a takeaway moment. It's something, maybe it's a disruption in their thought patterns. And from that moment of being in that talk, they will be changed somewhat as a result of that, that moment of being there. So that could be a simple insight or reflection, um, a connection with the audience, but it could also be a very direct call to action of encouraging people to step up and stand up and take, take a particular action as a result of that. And maybe I'm not necessarily suggesting that you direct people what to do, but you may ask them to to actually reflect on it what it what it is that they're going to go away and do as a result of that change in thinking so so it's always thinking about so what is the talk about so why is that important and then what are we going to do about it and that could be you making suggestions and also inviting them to to add in so invite people to to suggest things during the talk or invite people to stick around afterwards and have a chat. Um, so there's, it needs to be some kind of invitation, I think. And that's also um, a really important point in terms of getting your public speaking happening, but also that you feel like what it is that you're doing as a public speaker is actually making a positive contribution. So it's not just sort of words going out into this vacuum and that when the talk's over you can kind of sit down and relax and oh that's over and done with that that it's a that's a stone that's thrown into a pond and that ripple will keep on continuing on and you'll never actually know where those ripples reach and whether those ripples then turn into a wave in someone's mind or someone's heart and but actually you do every now and then I've been doing this for long enough now to to realize that it happens quite often and uh, people come back to me maybe 15 years later and have said oh you did this talk you know you're at this center or this festival and you said this particular thing and I really stuck with me and I went away and I thought about it and I've done this differently and I'm, my life has changed as a result and all of a sudden you realize that there's an enormous, I mean, I'm saying power, not in a, in a negative way, but with the power of words and with this sharing of your heart and your enthusiasm that you can have such a positive impact in a community, in a group of friends, in a, in a neighborhood, in, in many different ways. If you, if you speak with, from your heart with enthusiasm and you're authentic and you engage people, and you share the opportunity for people to actually walk with you in this path, if they connect with that too. So the other thing that I wanted to, to just reflect on really was that one of the most important things of being a good public speaker is to be constantly looking at what's worked well, what hasn't worked well, um, how did the audience respond at different times? Did they sort of fall flat? Did they look like they're about to fall asleep at certain times? And really be careful, uh, be carefully noting when those things happen so that when you finish the talk, you can actually sit down and make some, make some suggestions to yourself for improvement. But the other thing that I really suggest you to do is go and watch others. Go and watch people that you really admire speak. Go and watch the people who set your heart on fire that help you to understand things more deeply and to be you know taken to another place by the way that they speak and often these people like Helena Norberg Hodge here for me she's been a massive inspiration throughout my whole life I met her when I was just 23 and every time I hear her speak or I you know even have a conversation with her something about what she says shifts something in my mind and I absolutely love watching her in action on stage because she's so clear she has a clear message. All of these things that I was sharing with, she speaks from her heart. She's very well planned. She gives generously of her time and her energy. She's always engaging, sometimes very confronting, which is not necessarily a bad thing either. She um, And she always has something that you can go away and do as a result of it. And so I, so I encourage you too to fi find who are the people 
that you love to go and listen to, whether it be on TED Ed or whether it be live, um, whether it be uh, um, even on radio, who are the people who are the inspiring speakers and listen to them, listen to how they speak. Think about not just what they say, but how they say it. What is the process that they go through? Try and work out what's the process that they go through to deliver that message. What are the most powerful things? When is it? What do they say that makes you feel so switched on by what it is that they've just um, said? So I think spending that time not just planning your talk and delivering your talk but to reflect to refine to respond to where you see that like if you notice that there was a story that you told um and story is such a powerful thing in public speaking it's the examples it's what humanizes points if you just give points dry details People find it hard to connect. The connection comes through the stories, through the human examples, the human experience, the the emotional response to different things. And, and people remember that, they assimilate that information, they take it on and they process it and make it their own because it's talking human to human, you know, person to person, heart to heart. And and when you can talk from that point, there's really this opening that happens. So have a have a watch be really observant when you're speaking and be always connecting around the audience you know you've heard all the time about you know make sure you make eye contact with people in the audience and so we're making eye contact you know all right from front to back to to left to right and see see what's happening when you're telling different types of stories or you're giving different types of information or you've got different types of pictures and if you notice that there's a certain switching off that happens when when a certain thing happens then that's where you think okay well maybe I'll I need to refine that bit or I need to um, change how I do that or leave that bit out altogether Um, and so just be really a reflective practitioner and what you can do too as well as if you've got some friends in the audience um, and that you want to ask them later on afterwards so what did you know what did you think and you know it's nice to get your massage your, your ego massage and for them to tell that you're, you're all fantastic and you're wonderful but it's also really good if you've got some really honest kind friends who will tell you well that was really great but you know the bit where you're talking about such and such that kind of fell a bit flat and you know maybe if you could use some more examples in this situation and really listen to that feedback Um, so it's whatever feedback that you can see but then also what feedback you can get from your friends now also it's quite challenging at times to watch yourself or to listen to yourself back and you know even now sometimes uh, this when I with the talk that I did down at Sustainable Living Festival just recently it was a really big talk you know there was hundreds of people in this audience and and I I had my brother recording it for me and my my niece was there videoing it and I and so I've only just got the recording and you know it took me quite a few days before I could actually switch it on and listen to it normally I'm, I'm fine with because you know I'm, I'm doing movies and these sorts of presentation I'm having to listen to my voice all the time but there was something about that it was like I was speaking with people that I really admired and I was up on stage in front of a lot of people and I was thinking oh my gosh you know whatever I said the wrong thing but you know if you think about the overall picture and just breathe in it and as I said speak with your heart if there's something silly that you say you know most people wouldn't even remember it or just look over it as part of the general flow of everything and you know audiences that you've connected with and you have built a relationship with from the start tend to be so accommodating and so kind actually people are very kind when other people are standing up in front of them I think people are actually very kind typically when they're in an audience and they see someone really putting a lot of effort in to share something of value and being kind and coming from an authentic position. I think you'll find that the audience is, is less scary than you, you might imagine. So so in summary, what I wanted to share with you are these these were my key speaking tips. So speaking from the heart, making sure you have a plan or a structure probably not a script to give yourself as generously as you possibly can and be as natural as you can to connect 
and be present and available at a really human level like just be be there um, don't set yourself apart but be very present to think carefully about what is your take home message that and you might want to wrap that up at the end of what it is that you're wanting everyone to take away from it and to spend that time to reflect and refine so these are my seven public speaking tips i know there's so so much more that's involved in this but for me when i was reflecting on what were the key things as a speaker that i find to be really useful to keep in mind to keep me grounded and to not to not get panicked about being in that situation these are the things that i found have helped so much and it's not about it's not about this thing about delivery it's you're there together and that it's a gift that you're giving very generously and that you're having a relationship and a connection with these people it's not it's not a test it's not a it's not a um, confrontation it's a sharing and if you can kind of come at it from that perspective then and and you're respectfully doing it too and you thank people for being there and you thank people for listening and you be really honest and and um you know have integrity around that it, it's a really wonderful thing so thank you so much for attending um the next topic will i'll put up a little um post uh, on the side here so you can pick it i have one more session before i go away for a little while so um it will be a little bit earlier in march march the 18th actually so um I'd really love to hear what it is that you'd like to have a, a session on and um, I will do my best to, to make a particular masterclass about that. So I hope that this has been helpful for you, that there's been something that you've, you've got out of this. Maybe if you're here live um, participating in this workshop, you could share on the side in the chat perhaps something that is that you've learned from this or one of the uh, another key point that you've also learned to help you with your public speaking um, and also to encourage you to really think about how you could utilize public speaking and particularly in a in a permaculture context to be able to to make this your real job and and this is kind of what I always come back to all the time because I'm really keen to find ways that more of us can be making a living doing permaculture making a contribution because quite often we we live these split lives when we go off to work somewhere else and then we come back and do the the permaculture and the things that we feel that really matter and how can those be one and the same that you know we can still travel and help communities and um, do what we love but earn an income at the same time so unlocking the potential um, through things like public speaking which give you a chance to speak to larger audiences, to speak to different audiences, to grab opportunities when they arise and, and not to shy away thinking, oh, I couldn't do that. You know, I, I don't have the experience or I, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of that. To really just try and grab an opportunity when it comes along like that and to do your best. And, you know, it's not going to be perfect the first time or even the 10th time. And actually, by the way, nothing is ever perfect. You can, there's always something that you're learning. It's always new ways that you can do it. And so just starting is the important thing. I'm really excited by the fact that we now have the Permaculture Education Institute. It's been going since about June 2018. And this is the place where I'm offering a platform for people to, to learn about um, permaculture design, but also how to become a really excellent permaculture teacher and permaculture speaker as well and that be able to go out into the world to to teach to do community work to work in their neighborhoods to work overseas and to actually really make a great livelihood out of this i've just spent um part of my weekend actually we had some great meet up a great meet up in in Mullaney with people from the sunshine coast and and also brisbane area meeting at one of the students places and we got to um, share beautiful food together sharing seeds and sharing plants so even though the courses are online we still have these fantastic um, personal meetups as well as 
conversations online and and zoom conversations are coming um in the next little while too and also what i wanted to say is that um if you're interested in actually becoming a teacher and working overseas in places like africa and indonesia this is where um, my work within the permaculture education institute is um, sending me off now which is um, actually taking people who wanting to become teachers in that realm with me to work with different communities so already in august um, i've lined up with um, the women's group in western kenya to go and work with them on a permaculture design course and a women's help self-help program um, and then later on there's also projects in um, in indonesia where we uh, will be working with local communities doing community education programs so if you if you're interested in that there is so much possibility we have um people actually i'm i'm starting to think that i might need a little bit of help to do this because there is there's actually been so much interest in this that i might might be drawing on um, some of the students who are coming through this to help me to keep this going so again um the the opportunities for work through this type of of permaculture education is growing and growing and i i am just finding it an absolute absolutely phenomenal um journey to be on and i really welcome you to to come and join me on that um also if you did want to come and join me in the permaculture education institute this uh until actually a couple of days from now um february the 28th i have a special offer on where you can save four hundred dollars from the price of the course so this is a 10 basically a 10 month um, flexible online program and it's now 1597 australian dollars and also including in that um, a 297 dollar course which is the incredible edible garden and that is an amazing course actually that was my first online course that i developed and it includes so much of the background knowledge about the permaculture gardening tips and setting up permaculture garden designs and setting up the soil and the water systems and gardening with kids and creating a what I call a beauty garden, the things that you can grow and use on your body. Um, also setting up a tea garden. So what are all the sorts of plants that you can incorporate into your garden that you can use to replace um, teas that are imported from other parts of the world I, you know and these things are important because one for one most tea bags now are actually at least 30 percent plastic and secondly i was talking to a tea grower in kenya who was saying that pretty much they earn nothing for growing the tea by the time they've covered their costs and the the company's expenses they end up with pretty much nothing and so if we can support either fair trade or locally grown teas it can help us so much so anyway i hope you can join me um, if you'd like to sign up for the permaculture educators program i'll put a link beside here and remember this link for the special price is only available until midnight on february 28th so thank you again for joining me i hope you have a great month and i'll see you next month